We've already seen how to sew a banded collar. Now it's time to sew the more traditional collar and stand. Totally doable. And if you've been afraid of them, don't be. I'm going to show you a lot of practical sewing about them. You'll be able to enjoy and tackle your first shirt in no time. Let's go ahead and do it together. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and we are back to collar sewing. Now, in the previous video about collars, I showed you in detail how to sew a banded collar. We saw three ways. My least favorite way, the way I really don't like, the traditional way that you'll see in a lot of pattern instructions. And then the third way was my favorite way. So if you've missed that, go ahead and watch that because there are a lot of common concepts in that video that are gonna work for this one as well. In this case, we are not sewing a banded collar, we are sewing a collar stand with a collar. And I've got two techniques to share with you. One is a lot more simple than the other. They are both very, very pretty. They turn out amazing. And we'll see a lot of practicalities about them today. You'll be able to do them for sure. As usual, you will find these types of collars on different designs from here down on your shirt. You might have a full button up, have a placket that goes from the very top to the very end with buttons. You might have a half placket or you might have some other neckline detail. You will most likely have a yoke that's double and that you include seams with a burrito method. So you will see all these types of common elements in shirts or blouses that have this type of collar stand and collar unit. For the classic type where you have the collar stand separate from the actual collar, you will have two layers of these and you'll find different types of names in different types of instructions. For the collar aspect, which is the one that comes over the stand, you will usually have one that's called either the outer collar, the main collar. In all of these cases, this will be the interfaced one because it's the one that's visible on the outside. And behind it, you have most likely a pattern piece called under collar or lining. So you will have patterns that have different pattern pieces for the outer and the under collar. Some of these have under collar that's cut on the bias and has a center back seam. Others are cut on the straight of grain, but you have different pattern pieces for both. And in other patterns, you just have one collar piece that you cut twice, which means the outer collar and the under collar are exactly the same. In all of these cases, the outer collar is the one that you interface and the, the layer that goes underneath is the one that's not interfaced. Outer stand will be the one that is interfaced and usually the inner stand will be the one that's not interfaced. The inner stand is the one that's gonna to touch your neck, touch your skin. So it's nicer that it's not interfaced because it won't feel so stiff against your skin. And then the outer collar stand area, that's the one that's going to be seen and that needs that structure and the smoothness that you get from interfacing. But you'll see all that in great detail when we see how to sew them. I'm just mentioning the general things. Now, of course, you can decide on every single case what you want to do. If I was making a shirt out of chiffon, I would interface all of the pieces. <laughs> all the outer, the inner, all the layers, I would just interface them all because it's a really flimsy fabric and I know I would not have a good result if I just did some of the layers. So it's up to you to choose. Definitely if you're working with linen or cotton or denim or whatever, you just need one of these layers to be interfaced. In all of the instructions, of course, you have different seam allowances. You know that my preferred is a quarter of an inch, but it's just super, super hard to find. There are a few pattern designers that use it, very few, and I'm really grateful, but you'll most likely see 3 8 half or 5 8 of an inch as a seam allowance. In the sewing tutorials, I won't be making much of an emphasis on the seam allowances because each pattern uses their own. So you'll see me sewing, use whatever seam allowance your pattern has. In the previous video that was all about the banded collars, I talked about three problems that you might encounter and, and we also talked about solutions or preventative actions that you can take while you're sewing and while you're preparing to not have these problems, not run into these problems. So please have a look at the previous video because I go into a lot of nice discussion about that. I'm not gonna repeat that all over again. The first technique is one that you probably have not seen around a lot at all. I know I have sewn this technique in the 90s, early 2000s. I found this technique in some Berta magazines back in the day and when I saw the line art of a new Aria shirt from Love Notions, I got this deja vu thing. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I've done that. And it's a simplified way because it's just one piece and it's an all-in-one collar stand and collar. So it's all in one piece. That means that you don't need to unite a collar stand to a separate collar. It also gives you a pretty nice result. Now, in the instructions for the Aria, which by the way hasn't released, but will be releasing super, super soon. It says there to interface both sides. And I agree, I totally agree with that because you have a collar stand and a collar 
and you're missing that seam that you would have in the traditional method, which if you think about it, is gonna miss a bit of that structure that that seam gives you. So I think it's a really good idea to interface both sides, both the inner and the outer layers, because you do need that section of the stand to stand and the collar to fall nice and crisp. So definitely I would interface both sides. I would think about maybe not interfacing the side that's inside, only if I was using an extremely heavy fabric, like denim or like a super heavy linen. But I think in 90% of the cases, you'll do well with both of them interfaced. In the example that I'm going to show you, I'm using a really lightweight cotton. It's almost see-through, it's so, so light. So definitely interfacing both sides was the right thing to do. So if you've never sewn a shirt and you are scared of sewing a shirt because of the collar stand and collar aspect. I think you'll find this one very approachable. I want you to see it before the shirt releases so that you know. So let's see. The stand and the collar are integrated into one piece so there's no seam along this end. There's two layers, both are interfaced. Choose one of them, it doesn't matter which one. One will be on the outside, one will be on the inside. The one that's on the inside, we're going to do a guide stitch all along this bottom edge there so we can press that in by a quarter of an inch. I have my quarter inch presser foot that is going to help do that nice and neatly. Press the bottom row edge up by quarter of an inch. This is going to be the collar that's inside. So let's put this one away and take the collar that just has the raw edge extended. I'm going to fold this right sides together here at the bottom edge and just put a pin to mark the center back. So this is the edge that we're going to sew onto the neckline. And here we have the neckline of the shirt. This is right sides up facing you. And we're going to take this main collar or the outside layer and align the center backs here. Over here where we have this rounded edge from the collar stand section of the collar, we're going to have 3 eighths of an inch protruding from the edge of the button placket. So if you look at it from here, you can see this is 3 eighths of an inch left over. And that is the seam allowance that we need to be able to close this up later. I like to match the center of the collar to the shirt and then go off to the extremes. And then you go off and start working your way. You will usually find a notch on the collar stand that will match some type of shoulder seam or yoke seam. So make sure you just match them all up and if you've done your seam allowances correctly, everything should match up. Here it's all pinned. This is a pretty simple seam, 3-8 seam allowance. This is a curved area of the neckline, so it is a good idea to give it a few snips to relieve the tension of the seam allowance inside of the curve. Now we head to the iron and we press this up. Now that we've got the collar pressed, the seam allowance up, we can take our other collar piece, the one that's going to go inside and put it on top right sides together. And now this is where we are going to align this curve right here with all of this shape and sew like this. Pivot at a point there, pivot there, go all across and sew this. I'll take my time especially with this curve to get a really nice result. I don't want to rush it and get it all crooked there. I've given it a quick hand base to keep it in place. I don't want to deal with pins while I'm going through these curves. Remember we had pressed this in by a quarter of an inch? Well, the seam allowance on this side was 3 eighths. You can see that the inner collar piece is a tiny bit longer here on this side, but that's good because when you turn these right sides out, this fold is going to cover that seam. So don't think that's a mistake. I've just made sure to base that together to keep that difference there in the fold. And I've just basted the whole thing. It's the same thing on this side. Now to make it easier, I like to do this if I can. I just took a friction pen and drew my seam allowance, 3 eighths on the curve and exactly where I'm gonna pivot. So that is gonna help me do it more accurately.
Okay, I think that worked out really well. I was able to keep my seam exactly on the seam allowance I drew there. And the friction pin will come out with the iron. Now I'm just going to remove this bright yellow stitch. And now here, we need to snip into this corner or else we won't be able to turn these right sides out. So snip into it, but not through it, right there. And when you have a curve like this, I like to take out notches to remove bulk from the inside. So you take out little triangles like this. If you're doing a collar stand that has the collar separately, you'll still have this curve there. And I've always done it the same way. We can actually also reduce the bulk here with the seam allowance. So just cut it a little shorter and I'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, so this is the inner collar. On these points, what I'm going to do is also reduce here a little bit. Not too much though. And you can see I have an intersection of seams there. Maybe you can see it. I'm going to fold these seams onto each other like that. And I'll get a point. And I'm going to hold that point right there nice and firmly. And just flip. And this is where I'll always have just a blunt pencil to help. And I think that's a nice point right there. I don't like cutting diagonally into there because I just think it weakens that point. And over time, if you wash it, you might end up with a hole there. So I don't want to cut diagonally into there. So I can just fold the seam allowance onto itself like this and just flip it. And I feel like it's going to last longer that way. Okay, and now here is where we have this little curve like this. So it's like we have a collar stand there and then the collar, but it's all in one piece. So we just need to give this a good tidy. And now we're looking at the inside of the shirt. And now this folded edge is going to cover that seam by a little bit. Remember, we have a smaller seam allowance there than what we used to sew. So it's been well thought out. And then I'm going to give it a hand baste and then we can top stitch all around this collar. I've extended these two collars and we have the seam there. I'm going to press it open as much as I can. Try to get into the tip right there. And same as this other side. Here we had the seam allowance already going up like this. And now all we need to do is meet the seam. This is the inside of the blouse. This is the wrong side of the fabric here. This is the right side of the fabric. But we have the lovely placket. So from the inside is where we need to top stitch. And I've just hand basted that. I don't want to deal with the pins. And we're going to top stitch all the way around. So I'm going to pick a spot here on the back somewhere. And start edge stitching all along pivoting here at the points at the turns and then at this point we're going to be catching this edge onto the collar and that's how we finish again i'm using my blind hand presser foot to help with that if you ever wonder how my top stitching looks so neat it's because of the presser feet not because of me This is my Aria collar. It's the all-in-one stand and collar piece, so it's much more simple to sew. Meets in the center, but I would never wear it like that. I'll just wear it open. Probably with one or two buttons undone, it's still not showing anything and it's nice and comfortable. It lies really nicely on the back also. Here is an even closer look and it stands up. It's really pretty. It's just as pretty as a traditional collar. It's just a simplified version. I think if you've never sewn a collar before and you want to try this one, you will be really successful and you'll be really happy and you can have a really nice shirt i'm just going to show you the collar here both layers are interfaced there and here you can see the part that has the collar stand there that was snipped into to have a really nice result and this that folds over is that the collar now i'm never going to button up but if i did then you would see the traditional shape it folds over really really nicely it feels really nice on it looks very similar to the traditional method you saw me sewing this inner section last that's the way i top stitched and it makes total sense because i'm always going to wear this open so this is the seam that is going to be seen right there 
when you're wearing your collar. So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to be top stitching on this side like I would if I just had a banded collar that's on its own, that doesn't have this coming forward. On the sewing segment that you saw, it's just like it says in the instructions, it's perfect for this type of collar. But if I was sewing the banded collar option, which is also an option of the Aria, I would sew it in the reverse way. That you can see in the previous video about banded collar, I wouldn't sew it in this way, I would sew it reverse. Now we are going to see a more traditional collar stand with a separate collar. This is a really lightweight tensile twill. There is a separate collar stand and separate collar. This is the upper collar that's interfaced right there. On the back, we have an inner collar that has a center back seam and is cut on the bias. So all the aspects of sewing a collar like this are very traditional. You'll see it in both men's and women's shirts. And it's so nice to master these, you know, it's so nice to sew. Sometimes I'll top stitch this collar, sometimes I won't. This time I left it without top stitching, but in the example I'm going to show you, you are going to see top stitching there. What you are going to see is how to sew this one. This is a Mila shirt from Itch to Stitch. I love all the instructions, the techniques. They are just so, so perfect and so correct. And I have filmed this in full detail. This is what you're going to see. And it's going to include a lot, even block fusing, cutting out. You know, I'm working with chiffon here for the main pieces. So you'll see a lot and it will definitely help you sew your next shirt or blouse that has a separate stand and collar. So let's see. I have the upper collar here. I need one of these layers to be interfaced and the other one not. The under collar here is not interfaced and this one is cut on the bias. You can see it has the grain line mark there and this will have a center seam at the back. I like this for under collars because it gives the collar a better fold. It just folds nicely and you'll find that this one is going to be smaller than that one which makes the seam roll to the back. I want to block fuse. I've got a pin there showing that up to there is the area that I need to interface that rectangle. Cut a piece of interfacing, fuse this area. The interfacing is on, on the area that I need to be interfaced. This is just enough to fit my collar pieces. So I don't waste a lot of interfacing, you know, you always lose little corner areas. Two collar stands, one is interfaced, one isn't. These two I cut at the same time. You saw that I interfaced a piece of fabric first, so I cut them both at the same time. That ensures that they are going to be exactly the same. And then up there, we have the upper collar, which is just one layer. So I cut that just on one of that area that I interfaced. And then this piece is the under collar. This piece is cut on the bias. I'm not gonna fiddle with it until I'm ready to sew with it. Look how narrow this strip of interfacing is. I'd say it's about a quarter of an inch. So this pattern uses 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I really wanted to make sure that this would be hidden and not seen, you know, when you sew your collar and everything onto this area. I'll do the same to the other yoke and now I'm quite confident to sew and know that this neckline is protected and that it's actually going to match the collar stand. Super important. This is that tiny little curve that you can see on the center front of the piece. There are some marks here that I've drawn to match on the placket later, so I'm going to try to keep the heat away from there as much as I can and just focus the, like the tip of the iron just on the area that I need. Okay, I was able to conserve my marks here. Here are both collar pieces. This is the upper collar, the one that's been interfaced. The under collar was cut on the bias and it's two pieces and that seam there needs to be sewn. Now we can open it and I'm just going to finger press this. I'm gonna put that like this, right side there, so I can put these right sides together. What you want to see in this collar is this shape. This is a section that will be sewn onto the collar stand. So what you need to sew now is from there, 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 and there, not this part. So don't get confused with this. Just make sure that when you're looking at your collar, you're seeing this curve down like this and you're sewing this bottom longer edge. I've got the collars pinned together. I'm going to be sewing with the under collar on the top. Under collar is a tiny bit shorter here. You can see it's shorter there too, so I'd rather control it that way and have this sort of ease into the same length there. 
This is going to be good when you turn it around because the under collar being smaller will favor the seams to roll to the back and not be seen. So I love it when a pattern has this drafted separately with a separate under collar cut on the bias. You'll find a lot of patterns that just have a collar and it says cut twice. That is very common. But this is just bringing it up a notch, I think. Say so I don't actually pivot, I sew all the way down and then start again. <laughs> Sewing collars with this type of fabric is the best. It's just so easy to work with, it sticks to each other, nothing's moving and I'm very happy to do with this only with pins. Before I turn this right sides out, I'm going to open this long seam and just give it a good finger press as well. Done. See, and now these short ones too. So I'm folding the bulk on the under collar side, not on the interface side, but here, I just fold them on the intersection of stitches that I do. Hold it really firm and flip it. How crisp that is without having to snip into those corners I just never ever want to snip into corners I think this is really sturdy and really nice now again I have these double notches on the inside I'm going to lose those marks when I base the bottoms of this together so I will transfer those marks over to this side so I can see it once I've transferred them I'm just gonna base this together so the collar is one piece and it won't be flapping around I've marked my double notches here where I can see them and I've just pinned along the bottom edge here and I'll just base this together Now that we have this done, the collar is complete, we need to top stitch around the edge and I'm going to do that at a quarter of an inch. For this top stitch, I will be doing it with the upper collar on the top and the under collar on the bottom because the upper collar is what is visible and I want to make sure that's perfect. have top stitch that there with upper collar on the top and because the under collar is smaller look how the seam rolls to the back without you having to do anything about it so when you wear your collar and it lies like that on your garment it looks super nice because the seam is rolled to the back because the under collar is shorter you need to put your completed collar now with the under collar facing up looking up at you you should see that center back seam there that center seam will help you align this to the collar stand you need the collar stand that is interfaced this collar stand has on one of the edges the double notches there these are the ones that are going to match those double notches i've also marked the centers there with yellow so that yellow center mark is going to match my center back seam of the under collar right there when you construct any shirt pattern what you should see what is correct is that you have an interface collar stand touching the non-interfaced under collar on this collar stand you will find a mark there and that should match the edge of the collar right there everything is matching so nicely if you've cut your collar pieces on the fold you might have some discrepancy where the fabric folds and you might add extra length there without realizing or you might make it shorter because your pattern piece wasn't exactly on the fold so those are types of errors that we can make when we sew that might make these things not match. That's why I prefer to create extended pieces for collars. That way I just eliminate the human error side of that and I just have pieces that are going to match every time. But we'll just base that there on the top, close to the edge. I'm going to keep my quarter inch presser foot because why not? I need to sew smaller than three eighths. We will leave this one aside and on this other collar stand that is not interfaced, on the bottom edge where we have single notches right there, on this edge I've done a guide stitch and I'm going to press this up. I'm not gonna go to the iron, you've never seen me go to the irons yet, but I will press this up really nicely so that it's already pressed when we sew that to that. Okay, you can see it's perfectly pressed. And we'll have the upper collar here now facing up and this is where we place this other collar stand so now you have a non-interfaced collar stand touching the upper collar that is interfaced so you always want these things to be touching the opposite sort of thing over here 
we had an interface collar stand touching the non-interface under collar and now we have the non-interfaced collar stand touching the interfaced upper collar and we will align these keeping this folded and I'll pin all the way on the top and now this needs to be sewn at 3 8 I've got that area already folded up I actually drew my seam allowance so I can be a little bit more precise so I'm showing you this in real speed I only do a few stitches and then I lift and move and hand crank and I just don't go ahead and sew the curve because I know it won't be accurate like that double checking that the curve of this looks nice that they're nice and even and that I don't have like a wonky thing or any pointy area if I did I would gladly unsew this partially and try again but I'm pretty happy okay so this whole collar and collar stand is one piece and it's ready to be put onto the neckline it's looking so nice look how nice these rounded areas are it's so nice we need to take our interfaced collar stand the one that's not folded up like the other one this is what goes onto the neckline this notch here will match the center back of the neckline here is the neckline of the blouse you need to make sure that this is the right side of the blouse so this is all right side of the fabric there and I've marked with a pin where the center back of this neckline is and I'll take the collar stand that's interfaced and match that center back there. Then we have other notches to match along the neckline and the collar stand that are single notches. Look, I just want to show you. Look at that and look at that. Everything is matching. So good. So I'll just finish pinning this. Okay, so here we have the interfaced collar stand pinned onto the neckline of the blouse. You can see that this matches the placket. They should be right on the edge, right on top of each other. And this is what you'll see. You'll see the collar stand and the folded bit has already been folded there. And then on the other side, the same it should match the edge of the other side of the placket there. So we need to sew this now, sewing from there right on the edge, not catching any of this other collar stand, leaving it free. <laughs> Okay, so the collar stand has been sewn onto the neckline. This is the right side of the garment. This was a very curved seam. The neckline is super curved and the collar stand isn't. You can see the fabric of the collar stand looks super wavy like that. It's because it's trying to conform to this curved area. We shall snip now. So now I'm going to go to the iron and press this seam up. Press it up like that and so then this collar stand that is not interfaced has already been pressed like that can cover that seam and this is how the whole collar will be finished by sewing it there closed. There you can see that's pressed up, it's been snipped so it can lie nicely, it's very curved and now we have the collar stand that will cover that seam. I've pretty much gotten away with sewing the whole collar stand and collar without hand basting, not a single bit but not for this. 
I always hand baste this down because I can control it. And this is a very pretty precise area. I want it to look super nice. So I will be hand basting this down there before I top stitch that. I've taken my time and I've hand basted this super carefully so that it just covers the seam line. I'm going to top stitch and use my press foot to help me sew on the edge. And I'll be sewing that edge as well. So there, turn, everything, all this collar stand. You can see where I started and I'm going to stop right there and push these threads to the back so that there's no visible back stitching here. So it'll look like it's just continuous everywhere. Look how pretty this looks. It looks so good when you overlap that. You know, if you were doing a buttonhole at the top, both collar pieces should meet in the center. I didn't put a button right here on the collar stand because I would never wear this completely closed. I would feel very uncomfortable like that. Although it's a pretty look, I just don't wear things like that, like them open. Collar and collar stand made out of shirting. So nice to sew. I love the contrast. I think all the features that this pattern has are best shown with the contrast. If I'd sewn it in the same fabric, you wouldn't really see them. And this is the best way to use chiffon but keep the fiddly areas with that fabric that's really easy to work with so i love mixing this shirting with chiffon just made the process a lot nicer more enjoyable easier i would say you know <laughs> and still looks really nice i still get to have a chiffon shirt absolutely love it so rule of thumb is that the outer collar is interfaced that is sewn right next to the inner collar which is not interfaced and that touches your skin at the back you have your and the collar cut on the bias and has a center back seam this is not interfaced and that is sewn onto the collar stand that is interfaced because that's the one on the outside rule of thumb you don't want anything touching your skin to be interfaced which is the inner collar stand and following that rule and if you follow all the steps you'll be able to do it for sure such a neat result this is sewn onto a half placket as you can see there but it makes no difference to what you're sewing it here could have been a full placket, it could have been another type of detail, but the technique will be the same. Now this one is always sewn traditionally where you have the inner collar there sewn inside and when you wear it open that is the seam that you see there. So it's all, all nice, I don't have anything against this technique. Now there is something that you can do if you want to go a step beyond. You can see a peak of my internal yoke there, it's navy and I don't really mind that you can see it, I don't think it clashes or anything. And a little round collar right there that's been sewn by hand. I think you can't even see it. Now, I'm never ever going to wear it up here. And I don't even do a button hole or button there. I just, why bother? It's going to be open. And I've done it with the Matilda shirt dress from Megan Nielsen I have here to show you. I wanted a really clean look. So this has a curved collar, as you can see there. I have zero top stitching right there. This inner collar there that was loose and folded, I have hand sewn it there. Oh, the way around it took a while but it's so clean on both sides zero top stitching maybe you're watching a movie and you want your hands busy and you could be like sewing your inner collar there to look invisible maybe it's an option that you can do i did it with that one and i don't regret it so nice but i know traditionally you would be sewing that with your sewing machine i will put all these collar videos into a playlist so that it's easy for you to find them I'll include the videos I have about camp collars also because those are videos I've made and they're also collars that you find in different types of shirts and blouses. I will make a playlist to make it easy for you to find all this information. I will leave it linked down below of course. With the patterns that I'm showing you, I will leave those videos linked down below if you want a little bit more detail on the specific patterns. But remember, these videos, they're meant to be general, they're meant to be applied to any pattern you're sewing. They're not specific to these patterns because you'll be sewing shirts and collars on a whole bunch of different brands and you might see some differences, but you'll also see a lot of similarities. I really enjoy showing you the ways I think are the ones that are going to give you the nicest results. I hope it's really helpful. I have a shirt explosion happening. I really love the Aria shirt and shirt dress coming from Love Notion. So stay tuned and keep your eyes 
always very open for this new pattern release. I'm super excited to share. See you soon. Bye.